When it comes to the origins of human existence, space, and what lies beyond, big questions must always be asked and investigated. Brief Answers to the Big Questions by Stephen Hawking digs into the deep questions of human existence, the past, and scenarios of an almost undeterminable future. The compressed collection of essays, lectures, and interviews shares the late cosmologist's views and studies of the beginnings of the universe, the possibility of time travel, the necessity of space exploration, the future of human and artificial life, and, most prominently, the importance of human imagination and ability to not only ask but find answers to the big questions. Through personal anecdotes and simplified explanations of theoretical physics, questions make the massive universe understandable and the idea of interstellar travel incredibly possible. Time and space began at the same time. Other natural laws easily disprove this in the existence of stars and how they light the night sky. If the entire universe began at the same time, then all the stars in the entire universe would be glowing just as bright as each other because they came about at the same time. The universe, at its inception, was a lot smaller than it is now. Starting with the Big Bang, the universe was a cramped container of matter spat out from a black hole. As time went on, it expanded more and more. This is another law of nature, the universe is constantly expanding. Microwaves, the radiation left in the sky from a time of great universe expansion, tell a story of an unpredictable universe. It began out of nothing and continued creating more. The fact that the universe is three-dimensional and can maintain intelligent life was all by chance. The universe holds all of the secrets of what it was and what it will be, it's just waiting on humans to figure them out. God has always served as an easy way to answer natural phenomena. For centuries, humans have used their religion to navigate natural law. To say that the universe started without a creator is risky, but it is a question that needs to be investigated. This bold questioning can be traced to ancient Greece, with philosopher Aristarchus and his study of eclipses. He discerned that eclipses were natural events and not miracles summoned by gods. His questioning led him to discover the moon eclipse as the shadow of the earth over the moon. This great realization led him to more questions about other eclipses and, eventually, to the discovery that the Earth was not the center of the universe. This may seem simple with the advances of science today, but this was a shattering revelation at the time. Aristarchus proved the sky above the Earth was more than the heavens and God. He showed that there was more out there than a mysterious creator and, furthermore, that the yet unknown space could be understood by humans. From the beginning of time, humans have questioned their existence. Where did we all come from? And why are we all here? are the big questions that have been asked for centuries. Initially, myth was used to answer them. Creation myths always imagine the beginning of the universe, and they all center on a creator, someone or something that brought about the moon, stars, sun, earth, and life. These stories usually give oversimplified answers about the universe, beginning at a certain point and everything popping up at the same time. Essentially, the belief is that at first there was nothing, and then the universe and everything in it began to exist at once. Philosophers Aristotle and Immanuel Kant were some of the great thinkers who tackled this question of an infinite universe that has always existed. Science began to provide answers with Einstein's theory of relativity, which inextricably linked time and space. They only make sense within the context of each other so one cannot talk about a time before the universe existed. The most basic single-celled organisms were alive 500 million years after Earth was created, and Earth itself took over 9 billion years to come on the scene. For any life to exist, there must be carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen. As a complex compound, it took the universe some time to create the conditions that would make carbon. Hydrogen was the first element to appear and then, shortly after, helium was created. These two compounds created much of our young universe. After stars began to form, denser compounds such as oxygen, carbon, and iron were created by the extreme heat. As these stars exploded, they spread their materials through the universe. These elements eventually came together to make the solar system. With the universe rapidly expanding, there were many other planets, like Earth, created around other stars like the Sun. In this time, the ingredients necessary for life could have been on other planets, starting life before or even at the same time as on Earth. The beginning of life on Earth, DNA, has unknown origins and it's even speculated that it could have come from space. In early science, it was assumed that the future position of objects could be ascertained if their current position was known. It was accepted that the conditions of the universe at one time could predict all other conditions. If this were true, science could predict the future. However, there is a great amount of randomness, which affects conditions that are too complex to calculate. That is to say that many other variables cause an object to be in a certain place at a certain time. Many of the happenings of the universe are up to chance and can occur just by the pure luck of two atoms being in the right place at the right time. Nevertheless, science still pushed on to figure if there was a way to predict how an object will act in the future, despite the chaos. This is when the field of quantum mechanics and the discovery of quanta as measurement becomes important. Thanks to other advantages in quantum mechanics, it is now understood that an object's location can be found not by location or speed, but by its wave function. The world is in dire condition, with many factors threatening its future. Climate change is rapidly increasing to the point that the pollutions and harms from it are recreating themselves. Combined with a steadily growing population, humans have over-exhausted the Earth. 
policymakers and world leaders could take steps to decrease emissions but are instead denying the problem of climate change entirely. Populist leaders, like Donald Trump, not only refuse to acknowledge the real dangers of climate change, but also present other risks to the survival of humanity. The threat of nuclear war and the ultimate annihilation of the world's population is not only possible but probable. If humanity cannot learn to work together, rather than against each other, then the Earth does not stand a chance in the crossfire. Space colonization provides an opportunity for unification because it would force the entire world to work together. The extensive space travel required to give humans another planet to inhabit would need to be a global effort. Humanity's survival depends on the diversity of human imagination and ability. Humans have been around for well over two million years. This suggests that the Earth had the perfect conditions for intelligent life to develop and thrive. Given all the fluctuations and possibilities of the universe, that's incredibly significant. Moreover, life evolved quickly from single-cell organisms to the first mammals, as each stage in evolution was quicker than the last. Intelligent life was meant to exist on Earth, so why can't the same be said for planets in the observable universe? One answer is that life exists elsewhere, but it is simply not intelligent. Intelligence is not a required part of evolution. There could be planets filled with life, but not any that we could communicate with. Another possibility is that intelligent life existed on another planet but was decimated by the kinds of asteroids that killed the dinosaurs. A third possibility is that intelligence has led society to destroy itself, much like Earth's current trajectory. A fourth, more optimistic possibility is that there is another intelligent life in the universe, like humans, but they haven't made contact. Presently, Mars and the Moon are the only possible space colonies. Both present problems. The Moon is small, has no atmosphere, and limited water. However, it could serve as a suitable base, and it would not take new science to figure out how to get there. Mars provides no protection from solar radiation and has no known water source. Travel to Mars could be relatively easy as NASA has already sent rovers. All other planets in the solar system are too far from the warmth of the sun and come with other complications. Humans must imagine space colonization beyond the solar system. To support human life, a planet needs to have water and be located close to a star. Statistically, there are 10 planets within 30 light years of the Earth that fit these requirements. Alpha Centauri is the closest solar system with one of these new worlds. Exploration of this magnitude is beyond the scope of current technology. With the current speed of rockets, it would take 3 million years to reach Alpha Centauri. Interstellar travel would take centuries of research to make a reality, but it is not impossible. With breakthroughs in genetic research, humans continue to evolve and could ultimately breed a sort of superhuman. Furthermore, the ways in which humans can save and share data has allowed the species to evolve beyond DNA. Information is stored on computers and in books instead of in tightly bound genetic codes. The difference in the amount of knowledge one person can know currently, as compared to 100 years ago, is immense. So immense, in fact, that the next evolution of humanity could be in the intelligent technologies and systems they create. Moreover, the evolution of human intelligence does not appear to be slowing down, only rapidly continuing. Much of human evolution occurring in the past centuries has been technologically based. Currently, artificial intelligence is nowhere near an intelligence equal to or greater than humans. AI can provide solutions for some of the world's largest problems such as famine and poverty but can also be used to cause large-scale destruction. The existence of automated weapons that can go as far as choosing and eliminating targets is not far off. This is the kind of AI that could have disastrous effects, as it ends up on black markets and in the hands of civilians. Another possibility is AI becoming so intelligent that it is then able to advance itself at a rate higher than humans can keep up. Currently, there is no technology that could entrap humans, but now is the time to begin investigating the future implications of more advanced AI. Research and discussions around the future and potential dangers of advanced AI highlight the need for all AI to be created exclusively in service to humans. There should not be research into creating autonomous AI that would strictly be in service to other machines. In 1905, Einstein suggested that time travel could be possible if a person managed to travel faster than the speed of light because of the inextricable relationship between space and time. Presently, there is not enough fuel in the world to power a device of that magnitude. Surely, there can be other ways to warp time and space that would allow for space travel without using a galaxy's worth of fuel. This sort of warping is already seen in black holes where time ceases to exist. Perhaps, there has not been a curve in the universe yet that would allow for space or time travel, but that's not to say that it won't happen at some point in the future. Scientists currently know some of the circumstances that would make space and time travel possible but have yet to see the possibility of those occurrences. Time warp and wormhole theories are still very new, and there is still a chance that humans can travel across the galaxy or go back a century and return before they even left. Wormholes are a kind of space-time warp that would provide a portal through different locations in space-time. However, in order to make space-time curve backward in a way that would produce a wormhole, a density of negative mass and energy would need to be present. Though far-fetched, the field of quantum mechanics explains this is entirely possible because the universe works on a positive-negative sum measurement, which is just to say that it can never equal zero. 
If time travel is as possible as it seems, it's strange that there has been no one from the future who has come to tell humans how to accomplish it. Some scientists believe that it's because of a multi-history universe where every possibility is probable. It was initially thought that black holes, a consequence of one or multiple stars collapsing and under their gravitational force, had nothing inside of them and provided no record of what was swallowed. Much research in the field of black hole collapse revealed that even though it is impossible to see what is inside of a black hole, there is radiation being emitted, which says something about the large quantities of information once stored inside. Unfortunately, these antiparticles don't do the best job of telling what was left behind. Further, the size and shape of a black hole are not determined by the shape or size of the star collapse that caused it. For those reasons, all that is known about a black hole is its mass, electric charge, and shape. It was recently discovered that black holes do contain some information that is identified through a supertranslation charge. Supertranslation hairs are inside of black holes and affect the charge. There is not enough known about the other quantities of data contained within them, 